Hey everybody, Sloppy Joe here. Welcome back to the channel. Still sponsor free to this day and will always remain sponsor free. And if you have a real favorite YouTube channel or things like that, especially when it comes to firearms, you'll kind of understand why I make that joke uh, as it seems a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of my favorite uh, YouTube channels are going sponsored and that I think always, uh, it, it's interesting to me to see the change when they are independent to when they go sponsored and how suddenly you start seeing uh, t-shirts appear and baseball hats of certain companies or certain things and now then you start hearing things mentioned more and what they favor more it's always it's it's hilarious to me that i've seen that in the last couple months uh some of my favorites have started mentioning uh things a lot more and wearing attire that is <laughs> from a certain company or a builder or a manufacturer or, an, or a retailer so anyway this will always remain 100% uh, sponsor free, which means that I can always say what I want about anything I want. So what I want to talk to you guys today about, if that sound right, maybe, um, Makarov pistols or what is and what is not a Makarov pistol. Uh, I've seen a lot of confusion out there, uh, especially as I troll like the, uh, the arms lists, the gun brokers, the local gun shops, things like that. You see a lot of misinformation, and it's probably not, uh, it's not on purpose. It's not meant to confuse people. It's just that it's easier to call something that shoots the Makarov round, just call it a Makarov. Even though anything that shoots an MB-18 round is not a Makarov. Now, what is and is not a Makarov is... It's very simple. You just have to know what to look for and what to avoid. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to go through what some real Makarov pistols would be versus what some non-Makarov pistols would be. They all shoot the same ammo. They all shoot 9x18 uh, Makarov ammunition, but they are not all Makarovs. So let's talk a little bit more about what is and what is not a Makarov. And help clear up a little bit of the confusion for you guys if you're just getting into the uh, Cold War era Soviet uh, Eastern Bloc country pistols from that time. If you're just now getting into these types of pistols, whether it be for collecting, for personal carry because you want a cheap pistol to, to carry concealed that you're not worried about beating up. Uh, if you just want to collect because you like to collect. If you're like me, I'm a big fan of 9x18 pistols and 9x18 round, so I collect them. Whatever your reason is, um, whether you're just getting into it for whatever reason, let's try to clear up some of the fog. So if you're at a local gun show, if you're cruising online, if you're looking at a gun board, you know what is and what is not a Makarov. That way you're not confused about what you're purchasing. So let's take a moment and let's get into it. All right, guys, so what is and what is not a Makarov? So this is something that we always see if, if we're searching, whether it be gun broker, arms list, you go to a gun show, uh, your local gun shop. A lot of them will mark anything that fires a 9x18 Makarov round. They will call it a Makarov. And it doesn't matter where it came from, what country, they're all called a Makarov. And in general, that's fine. But really, that's not the case. So let's talk a little bit about what is a Makarov. What is a Makarov is anything that would have come out of Russia that looks like this, says Makarov on it, or was produced by, let me get that in there, uh, by Cal. And by Cal is the company that manufactured the commercial Makarovs for export to the U.S., uh, basically for consumer usage. And the only difference between this and a military pistol is the adjustable rear sight. And that was mandated to basically now classify this pistol as a sporting pistol versus military pistol. But other than that, it is the same pistol, same frame, same working parts, made in the same factory by the same people. All the same. So, if it came from Russia, if it came from Bulgaria, and even the Chinese manufactured their own version of the Makarov. Those 
I would say are Makarov pistols, real Makarovs. Now, a lot of stuff that you see marked as Makarov could have come from any of the Eastern Bloc countries. That would have been Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic. They all manufactured their own pistols that fired, again, the 9x18 Makarov round. Now, these were introduced, the real Makarovs were introduced in the late 40s, basically when the Russians saw a need to replace the Tokarev. So they went away from the larger single-stack Tokarev, moved to the smaller caliber, small, uh, slower-moving round, and developed this pistol, the Makarov. And it is, I believe, still in service to this day with certain military and police units. Um, they've done some things to modernize it along the way. Um, in the mid-90s, they began importing this version. Uh, and this is basically the double-stack version of this pistol, as you can see evidenced by the magazines. So this was your 8-round capacity mag. This is a 10-round commercial mag. These could also be gotten in 12-round versions. Now, the only other really high-capacity uh, 9x18 variant pistols were made by the Czechs, the CZ-82. Now, that is not shown on the table, and that is because I have not acquired one that I really wanted to buy. Um, I've missed the boat a couple times where some of the uh, aim surpluses, things like that, where they've gotten some in, and they were really nice. Now... I, I've missed that boat a couple times, and generally when I come across them, they're pretty haggard. They're pretty beat up. The uh, the finish on those pistols, was it was kind of a paint on finish. And a lot of it had chipped away, and they just looked very in, in a very poor state. And for the money that people are asking for them, uh, I'll just kind of hold out and wait for one that is in, in really good condition and, and pay good money for it, rather than paying premium dollars for something that's really beat up. So the only pistol kind of not represented here in the 9x18 category is the CZ82, which in, its, which in itself operates exactly the same as all these pistols. It is a 9x18 variant blowback, blowback meaning that the the way that it works, basically, is when you pull the trigger, this is empty, by the way, when you pull the trigger and fire, the action, the slide doesn't, the barrel, the barrel's locked in place, the slide just goes back and forth. The only thing holding this slide forward is the recoil spring inside of here, and I will show you that real quick. Do a quick takedown. So... The barrel is in a fixed position. The barrel does not move. It doesn't uh, hinge. It doesn't do anything. It's in a fixed position pinned to the frame. The only thing that basically works or moves on this when you pull the trigger is you've got the recoil spring, which is basically compressed inside of here. You pull the trigger. It blows back, operates, ejects, picks up a new round, and moves forward. It's just a straight back and forth motion. The barrel doesn't move. Nothing else moves. It's a very simple, rugged, and honestly cheap design, which is why the Russians went to this design, because it was cheap to manufacture, easy to maintain, and the parts interchanged very easily from pistol to pistol. Uh, and other than that, in the field, they were easy to clean, Nothing, you, you couldn't lose any parts because it just broke down into three pieces, which was the frame, the top slide, and if you really wanted to, you could pull the recoil spring off and you have three pieces. Four if you include the magazine. So they were a very simple, rugged, cheap design to make, wherein the internal pieces and parts sometimes serve two or three purposes in the action of the weapon. So it was just very simple. So moving over to some other countries, the... Uh, Hungarians, they developed what they called the FEG, and this is the PA-63. And it is, looks, feels, everything like a Walther PP. It is almost an exact copy. Very few differences, but by and large, it is an exact copy of a Walther PP. Uh, and the nice thing about these, which is more traditional to Western Europe versus uh, the Eastern countries, Eastern Bloc countries, 
is it had a thumb magazine release right there built into the side of the slide. Whereas the Russians and the Bulgarians uh, and even the Polish in this case, they went with the bottom, the bottom release that was right behind the magazine at the bottom of the grip. So the Hungarians built this. Now this is not a Makarov. This is a FEG PA63. It fires a 9x18 uh, round, but it is not a Makarov. This is a Hungarian FEG PA63. And I'm going to say that over and over because it is not a Makarov. So you'll see these often. When I, when I found this online, uh, I went in, searched out FEG PA63s local to me, didn't pop up with anything. Then I said, oh yeah, let me type in Makarov. Once you type in Makarov, oh, this pops up. So it is not a Makarov. It wasn't classified as a Makarov. It wasn't designed by the man named Makarov. This was designed by the Hungarians for their use. This was their military and police pistol. And again, it is basically a copy of a Walther PP. So moving over to this little guy, this is a Polish... P64. This was developed in the Rodom factory, or Radom, however you like to pronounce it. This is also 9 by 18 Makarov chambered, but it is not a Makarov. This is a P64. This is what the Polish developed to be their military and police sidearm pistol during the Cold War era. Now this is a little tiny guy. It only chambers, it's six rounds in the magazine, then you could add one to the pipe or one in the chamber. But again, it operates exactly the same way as its big brothers, the, the Russian Makarovs, in that it's just a simple blowback design. The, the, uh, the barrel is fixed, the parts are very simple, there's not a lot of moving parts, it breaks down exactly the same. This is basically a copy of a Walther PPK or a compact. It's very small, very rugged, very lightweight, very easy to conceal or hide in a pocket of a coat or uh, in your pants, whatever it may be, or a holster. Very simple design. Again, this is not a Makarov. This is a P64, Polish P64, not a Makarov. So those are one of the confusing things that you'll see out there. And if you're just getting into uh, collecting pistols that shoot the 9x18 round, that's one of the things you got to look out for because a lot of people who are not in the know necessarily call everything that fires this little round a Makarov. Now, I love Soviet, uh, Soviet era, Cold War era pistols. I love anything that shoots a 9x18 Makarov round. I really love the pistols because they're simplistic, they're easy to work on, they're easy to clean, they're super accurate, which is a great benefit for having that fixed barrel uh, in the pistol because the barrel doesn't move and is fixed to the frame there's a lot less that can throw off the trajectory of the round so these are hyper accurate pistols it's one of the things i joke about is you can get into a 250 or 300 dollar surplus uh 9 by 18 pistol and it will be as accurate as a really nice 1911 or a really nice modern 9 millimeter so the value for fun is very high. There's, there's a lot of value, they're a lot of fun, and they don't cost a lot of money to get into. In most cases, you can pick up two of the same pistol for what it would cost to buy, say, a brand new Glock or a brand new CZ. Now, CZs, I'm a huge fan of. I love CZs. But for the pure fun of it, these are great guns. They're cheap to acquire and they're cheap to operate. Now, when you talk about the ammo choices out there, uh, this is kind of getting hard to find. This is uh, your good old Seller and Bella, Bellet, however you want to pronounce it. Now, this is back when you could get this stuff and it was uh, produced with brass cases. Really hard to find now. The majority of it is going to be steel cased. It'll have a steel casing with some kind of a polymer coating. And it'll be like a bimetal, uh, a bimetal, bimetal bullet in there. Um, as far as manufacturers go, Silver Bear is a good one. They're often easy to find. You can find it anywhere. 
it's just typical. They all range between 94 and 95 grain uh, full metal jacket. These are a zinc plated steel case. So you can see the zinc coating on there. And that's just all there to basically keep the keep the steel from corroding and to kind of help uh, reduce friction when it's you know operating inside of the weapon. So you can get that stuff. Um, Wolf, uh, Wolf makes some as well. And theirs, of course, is usually green. The case is usually green. It's polymer coated. Um, and it all operates exactly the same. Um, let's take this stuff out of the equation. This is checkmate. This is actually very clean shooting. Uh, but this is hard to find anymore. Most of it now comes out of either uh, Wolf. There's, uh, there's also Red Army Standard, which is a new one on the market. Uh, Silver Bear. Most of it comes out of Russia. It is a little bit dirty when you shoot it. Uh, it does tend to uh, throw a lot of soot and crud and, you know, just, un you know, just a lot of slime. It just tends to be a dirty shooting ammunition. It's not, it says it's non-corrosive. All of this is non-corrosive. I've never had an issue with corrosion, but you definitely, I would say, clean the guns after you shoot them because they are going to be very dirty, especially if you fire a couple hundred rounds in a, in a range day. So again, let's just recap this real fast. This is a Makarov. This is a Makarov. A Bulgarian, if it came out of Bulgaria, you could call it a Makarov because it's the exact same design. The Chinese had their own version of this that they made. Almost the exact same design, very subtle changes, but that, I would say it's a Makarov. The Hungarians, they made the PA-63. This came out of the FEG factory. Not a Makarov. The Poles had the P64. Again, not a Makarov. And of course, the Czechs. And I will add a picture of uh, what a CZ82 looks like. Uh, it, it, a CZ82 kind of looks like this, but it's got, uh, I would say, a more a softer look to it. A very, it's got a very sleek look to it. Very, very pretty pistols. Uh, I will have one soon. Again, CZ82, not a Makarov. Especially if you say that to a CZ, a CZ fan, uh, they'll freak out at you because they, they, the CZ guys, I'm a CZ guy, definitely not a Makarov. A CZ is a CZ. But it does shoot the 9x18 Makarov round, but not a Makarov. This is only, the way this kind of works is back when Russia ruled everything in Eastern Europe, they mandated all their bloc countries, the, the Czechs, uh, the Romanians, the Bulgarians, the Poles, the Hungarians, everyone had to have a pistol that fired this round. So they said, okay, fine, we're not going to adopt your Makarov, we're going to come up with our own thing, which is why you have you know, copies. You have basically, they took what the best thing at the time was, which was the Walther PP. The Hungarians almost copied it verbatim. This is almost exactly a Walther, but it's chambered in 9x18 Makarov. The Poles said, okay, we like the PPK. We're going to copy that. And you ended up with the P64. Not a Makarov. It just shoots the same ammo. So hopefully this kind of opens up a uh, you know, kind of opens up your brain a little bit. You kind of know a little bit more now than you did 10 minutes ago about what a Makarov really is. Just because it fires the 9x18 Makarov round, it does not mean it's a Makarov. If it came from Russia, Bulgaria, and arguably China, I would call that a Makarov because it is this designed pistol. If it came out of Hungary, if it came from Poland, if it came from the Czech Republic... Uh, at the time, Czechoslovakia, those are not Makarovs. Those are all their own pistols. And the big reason for that is parts from these two, the Polish and the Hungarian, these don't interchange. Parts from these two will not interchange with these. But you open these two up, a lot of the parts will interchange with each other even though that this is a single stack, this is a double stack. If this was a Bulgarian Makarov and this was a Russian Makarov, all the parts would interchange, I would think, 100%. That's the way they were. So a real Makarov will have almost 100 or will, will have 100% parts interchangeability. This does not share anything with these. 
This does not share anything with these. So a Makarov parts interchangeability. If it's not a Makarov, it won't interchange parts. So remember, the Russians, Bulgarians, Chinese, pretty much all the same pistol. The Hungarians, the Poles, the Czechs, completely different pistols all to themselves. So hopefully that kind of clarifies a little bit what is and what is not a Makarov. Maybe it helps with some confusion. Maybe if you've been to a gun show, you've been to a, um, a local gun shop, or even searching online, and you have a little confusion of what is or is not a Makarov, hopefully this clears it up for you. So if you have any questions, comments, please post them up. I'm always, uh, I'm always available to answer them as best as I can. Uh, that's it. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll talk to you later.